Hi, Missy, RM Health Coach and Wellness Coach, and I just wanted to share a really fun, easy recipe with you today. These are cereal bars. Um, breakfast is so hard for people, right, to eat healthy. So I think about uh, my husband who wants to go to the store and buy those cereal bars that he gets, and I think about how expensive they are. I think about how little nutrition they have, and... I just think, well, you know, we could do that for the week and be prepared. So today they're going to be gluten-free cereal bars. And if you look in the store of those, those Pamela gluten-free cereal bars are almost $6 for five little bars. And our gluten-free friends need an easier way to eat gluten-free, don't they? Just easy and less and more affordable and have more fiber because if you think about those ingredients it's usually white rice flour and and really starchy flours that they use in those ingredients and we want to use whole grain for these so that they're going to have more fiber more protein and overall more nutrition now you're going to see that my, my utensils are a little dirty because i have put my raspberries in first so yesterday i made um bars with with dates and pumpkin seeds and oats and walnuts and today the first batch was raspberry more pumpkin seeds you know I'm trying to give him his vitamin E and those good things for his for his male organs that he wants to keep working you know and then um, we're going to do two parts flour to one part starch which is pretty classic in gluten-free baking and then I'm going to cut the fat a little bit too, so we'll see how they turn out. I'm not a big fan of cooking with applesauce, but I want him to be healthier, so we're going to try that. And it, it looked pretty good so far, so I'll see what they taste like. I'll let you know. You know how I am. This is always a test kitchen. If it doesn't taste good, I'll let you know. So I'm going to start with a fourth of a cup of applesauce. This is a you know, sugar-free organic applesauce. If you don't do organic, that's up to you. No big deal. So there's a fourth of a cup. And then I want a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. So that's going to go in the bowl. Something crashed, didn't it? And then I want my egg. I want you to see how this mixes up pretty good. So you can see that it, I want that oil incorporated into the applesauce. And it's looking pretty good. So you know how your cookie recipes say to cream your butters and sugars, right? That's kind of what we're doing. We're going to make a butter here. We've got our applesauce, we've got our olive oil, and now we're going to add an egg. And you can see how it's, that egg makes it thicker and creamier. It looks, it looks like creamed butter. That's what it looks like. But that doesn't mean that's what it is. All right, so now I'm going to add a half a teaspoon or actually just a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder and then I'm going to try a half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar now it's really going to look like look at that you can see the texture changed it's thicker bubbly Want, he wants a little sweetness always. So now I'm going to add a tablespoon of my maple syrup if I haven't used it all. If you do run out of maple syrup, no big deal. Just add a tablespoon of honey. Just don't use corn syrup like the 
big companies do. So now we have a little bit of sweetness in the applesauce. We have some sweetness in the maple syrup, and then we have a nice texture here for the for our batter, for the beginnings of our batter. Okay, now if you haven't looked at um, Azure Standard, you get really good deals on the bulk stuff there. So this is five pounds of gluten-free um, millet flour. You can buy millet and you can grind it in your bullet. If you have a bullet blender with a flat blade, you can grind it and make it get all of the husk and all of the fiber and the bran available in that. Um, he's not a, he doesn't have a problem with nuts, so I'm going to use a little bit of almond flour. And then for the starchy part, I'm just going to use two tablespoons of the arrowroot flour. And that's just going to hold it together. And that's hold it and get started. Millet flour has a lot of really good vitamins in it. It's, it's a whole grain. So we have one cup of that. I have one half cup of almond flour. I'm going to have all of the nutritional breakdown for you on the blog post, so check that out. And then two tablespoons of the arrowroot. I don't even know that you need it, honestly. I think it would hold together pretty good without it. But it always says to call. It calls for that to hold it together. And while I'm at it, and while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to put in a fourth of a teaspoon of, of xanthan gum. And again, that's just to hold it together a little bit so it's not crumbly when, I, when you make your bars. Here we go. So I'm going to time out on that. Talk about our berries. So I just need one cup of blueberries and I'm gonna put that on my stove to make the filling for these bars. I'm going to use three dates and three prunes to sweeten those. And I'm also gonna use a tablespoon of the maple syrup. So if you do the prunes, make sure that you get that pit out of it. I didn't yesterday and it tore up one of my bullet cups. It looked exactly like um, it did. It went right through the plastic, put dates all over the backsplash of all over the door. It's pretty, pretty scary. So a cup of blueberries are going into the into the pan on the stove back here. And then I'm gonna put three dates and three prunes in with that. And then we'll get back get started on our batter again. Okay, so the blueberries are on the stove. I'm just heating them with the dates and the prunes and a little bit of maple syrup. I'm not boiling them or anything because I don't want to overcook them and get all the nutrients out of them. I just want them to be a little dissolved so I can puree them in the bullet. So I have my, I've added my millet, my almond, and a little bit of xanthan gum to our batter. I'm gonna add some oats. And I want more fiber in this, so I'm gonna use a couple of tablespoons of chia seeds. So, okay. and we're ready to mix up our batter. Dry ingredients and our wet ingredients all together. Now, if you're using gluten-free items like this, you'll notice that they will soak up the liquid pretty, pretty much. So you do want to let them rest. And I can see that this has soaked up quite a bit. And if you think they're too dry, you can always add another tablespoon of your applesauce. But 
going to see. I'm trying to get away with less of it. I don't like the texture when it's too, too much applesauce makes it heavy, and I don't want that. All right, that looks pretty good, actually. So it'll dry out a little bit. It's going to soak up more of that liquid. If it looks too dry, I'll tell you what I do is I just pour a little bit of milk over top of it, and you'd be surprised. That's what I did yesterday. I thought, well, it looks a little dry. I'm just going to pour some milk over it. <laughs> That's what I did when I put it in the... In the in the oven and they turned out looking like this these are the bars that I made yesterday with date they're date walnut pumpkin bars they're delicious now if your person likes sweeter things you can always add two tablespoons of maple syrup instead of one tablespoon so we're going to take this dough we're going to split it in half Okay, so half of it's going to go in this pan and spread it out with your fingers or your fork, thin, however you want to do it. But you can see that makes a nice dough. Spreading it out nice and thin. It don't look like much, but it'll go. You can use your fingers. It's kind of sticky on my fingers, but you can always wet your fingers. If you're in a hurry, and you want to get it in the pan pretty quickly. You don't have the patience to spread it out with your fork. You can always do that. But you can see this fork's working quite well to spread this out. And you can taste it. It's not sweet enough. For me, it's plenty sweet enough. For David, there's probably not. Yeah. So at this point, if you wanted it a little bit sweeter and you didn't have maple syrup, you could take a teaspoon of sugar and put over that. Um, but like I said, it's it'll be fine. I'm making them for him. So I'm going to do just a little extra for him. And that's probably about two teaspoons. Let's see how that mixes in. To make them a little bit more palatable for him. And then we're going to check on our blueberries because I think they're ready. Alright, <laughs> here's my cup that had raspberries in it. I do one baking and one cleanup, and if they have a little bit of raspberry in them, they'll be okay. So, as you can see, they're not boiling. They're just a little bit warm. And I'm going to put them in my bullet cup here. trying hard not to lick this. <laughs> you know these dark berries have all those anthocyanins we need. So we're going to do our tea our tablespoon of the maple syrup. And then I'm going to puree it in the bullet. So hang on there cuz it's loud. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's some good stuff right there. You cannot get that in a store-bought cereal bar. Look, I just got it all over my sweater. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. Yeah, it's so thick. You don't need artificial colors. There's no artificial flavoring. It is just your blueberries and your maple syrup your date. Yeah, look at that. Gosh, that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I've got a little extra. 
So a cup of blueberries was all it took for the, okay. And then you see, I, I had to use my pie pan because I had already used my, my nine by nine pan to do my raspberries. Okay. So the top goes on. So you can, you can do this two ways. You can sprinkle it this way and just have it like a crisp on top. They're all gonna, they're gonna bake together closely. Or you can put it all out and then spread it with your fork like we did on the bottom. They're your bars, you do them the way you wanna do them. And if you don't like the way it sticks to your fingers, you can dip your fingers in some water or dip your fingers in some, some flour. I can't wait to try these. The fruit bars were so good. The actually the, not just the fruit bars, but the, the date and fig. All right, so let's see. The other one I did, just a spread on top. Let's see if we can spread that out a little bit. Okay, not wanting to do that on top. So just sprinkle it on in little, in little, little balls, little dollops, and they'll bake together. And I'll show you what they look like when they come out. So then I'm going to do for him, as I said, the funny sweet enough for me. Wash my hands off. But not for him. So I'm going to make it just a little bit more for him by putting one more tablespoon of maple syrup and just sprinkling that. Just kind of drizzle your syrup over the top. If you want to fool your kids into thinking there's something really sweet, you can sprinkle some powdered sugar on it. I'm going to put some heart healthy walnuts on this. That's it. It goes into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. Here is what the raspberry bars look like. So as you know, this is the test kitchen. We'll see how they turned out. If I can cut them, they're not quite cooled off yet. They need to cool off just a little bit more. But what I'm looking for is that they hold together. I want a little bit of crispiness and a little bit of sweetness. And that's why you use the ingredients that you do. You want, I don't think they're cooled off enough, but we'll try it to see. The ones I made yesterday, I used um, a half a cup of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. So today I'm just using the applesauce to see how it turns out. Let me know if you have a test kitchen. What do you do in your test kitchen? <laughs> Look at that. They came out pretty good. You're gonna have some stragglers there. So there are raspberry. Raspberry cereal bars. All right, here, here we go, I'm gonna taste them. 
everything I like is in here, so I don't know why I wouldn't like to. I like them a lot. If you're a big sugar holic, you're not going to like them. And he would like the extra maple syrup. They're perfect for me. One tablespoon in the filling and one tablespoon in the in the crust is plenty of sugar for me. But like I said, if your family is just coming off of sugar, you might want to wean them off of it or just take it away completely, however you want to do it. But they're good. Give them a try. Let me know what you think. You have a great day.